him at arms. Sergeant at Arms will escort the Honorable Retired Lieutenant Governor and the new Lieutenant Governor to the platform. God of might, wisdom, and justice, through whom authority is rightly administered, laws are enacted, and judgment decreed, assist with thy holy spirit of counsel and fortitude the governor of this state of New York, that his administration may be conducted in righteousness and be eminently useful to thy people over whom he presides by encouraging due respect for virtue and religion, by a faithful execution of the laws in justice and mercy, and by restraining vice and immorality. Let the light of thy divine wisdom direct the, the deliberations of our legislature and shine forth in all their proceedings so that they may tend to the preservation of peace, the promotion of national happiness, the increase of industry, sobriety, and useful knowledge. We recommend to thy unbounded mercy 
all our brethren and fellow citizens throughout the United States, that they may be blessed in the knowledge and sanctified in the observance of thy most holy law, that they may be preserved in union and in peace, which the world cannot give. Amen. Permit me now, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce to you a gracious lady, the new Secretary of State, Mrs. Carolyn K. Simon. of this gathering will please stay standing and join in the singing of one stanza of our national anthem. Do you solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of New York, and that you will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of Governor of the State of New York, according to the best of your ability, so help you God? I do, so help me God. Good morning. It's an honor indeed to stand before you in the presence of predecessors who have served with such dedication and distinction in this high office. As this sixth decade of the 20th century nears its end, we near to what could be the fatal testing time for free men and freedom itself everywhere. 
over the span of many a century, many a generation, since its own age, is a moment of historic decision. We of the 20th century know it. We know it because we have witnessed for more than 25 years the tragic ordeal of freedom. We have seen the tyrant, first fascist, now communist, strike down free nations, shackle free people, and dare free men everywhere to prove that they can survive. We know this to be a time of historic decision because we see the world divided. The weapons of war perfected to deadly extremes and humanity seeming at times about to turn and prey upon itself. And we know something else. We know how and why this world is divided and in peril. It is divided essentially between those who believe in the brotherhood of man under the fatherhood of God and those who scorn this as a pious myth. It is divided between those who believe in the dignity of free men and those who believe in the monstrous supremacy of the totalitarian state. It is divided between those whose most potent force is their faith in individual freedom and those whose faith is force itself. It is divided between those who believe in the essential equality of peoples of all nations, races, and creeds and those whose only creed is their own ruthless race for war among themselves. Thus does our role in the world and our duty to ourselves coincide as if they were one. We are called upon to conduct ourselves like free men with the will and the wisdom to make freedom work. To do this, we do this not with rhetoric but with action. We do this not simply by what we say, but by how we live. We must speed our economic growth, for upon the vitality of our economy depend the jobs and the incomes of all. We must help industry prosper and expand. We must face realistically our transportation problems. We must wisely develop our natural resources, for only in all such ways can we guard our truly priceless resources, our citizens, and their well-being. We must make more orderly, efficient, and responsible our government processes. We must put the state's fiscal house in order. We must review and revise outmoded methods of the executive branch. We must erase all administrative abuses, all marks of waste and inefficiency from our government. For only by such repairs and reforms can this government by the people be seriously and literally government for the people. We must, wherever appropriate and proper for the state, effectively serve the needs of popular welfare. We must improve and expand the security provided by our programs of social insurance and health insurance. We must encourage urgently, urgently needed investment in private housing. We must improve all our programs for the aged, health and recreation, housing, and employment. With our rising standard of living and increased leisure time, it is important that the state give increasing encouragement to the intellectual and cultural facilities for our people. In all of these areas of human want or need, 
government must have a heart as well as a brain. We must truly strive to perfect the rule of our law. We must promptly strengthen our whole court structure by thoughtful and thorough reorganization. We must, through the efficient mobilization of all forces, of, law, of all enforcement officers and agencies, not only declare, but aggressively wage war upon organized crime. And in all our laws and their enforcement, we must and shall never forget the crime that is committed by any assault upon civil rights. Here our vigor must match our vigilance. For it can be said of any state or nation, by their laws, you shall know them. And we must work, perhaps hardest of all, on the field where the future can be won or lost, in our schoolroom. We must attack the problem of juvenile delinquency. We must continue urgently needed state aid to our schools. We must plan years into the future expansion of our state institutions for higher education. For what we do not teach, we cannot say. And this is true of freedom itself. In all such ways, may we citizens of New York prove worthy of being citizens of the nation that is the best and strongest hope on earth for the freedom of man everywhere. In such tasks, we can give little time or care to conventional labels or slogans. They have little meaning in terms of the realities of life today. We shall be conservative, for we know the meaningless value, the measureless value that is our heritage to save and to cherish and to enrich. We shall be liberal, for we are vastly more interested in the opportunities of tomorrow than the problems of yesterday. We shall be progressive, for the opportunities and the challenges are of such size and scope that we can never hold and say, our labor is done. Above, above all, we must know the world we live in and the values for which we strive. We shall never surrender to the belief that man is a soulless device made to serve a machine or a state. We know that the state and machines are properly conceived and designed to serve man. We shall never yield our faith in the spiritual nature of man, not a common creature of the same forces that rust iron and ripen corn, but a creature truly designed to serve his maker and his own true good, his own full promise. Let us unite in common cause with hope and faith and love, with vision and courage. Together, we can thus work toward the common goal of freedom of opportunity for men everywhere in a world of peace. I shall need your help and your trust. I shall ask that help, and I pledge myself consistently to serve that trust. Thank you. Dr. Richard N. Hansen of the Union Church for Cantico Hills, Tarrytown, New York, will deliver the benediction. Dr. Hansen. Let us pray. O oh God, our Father, we turn to thee at this solemn moment to ask thy blessing upon thy servant, Nelson Rockefeller, 
as he enters upon his duties as governor. May thy spirit rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. With righteousness may he judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the land. May he hate evil and do good. May he seek justice and correct oppression. May he defend the fatherless and plead for the widow. And in his whole administration, let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. And now may grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be and abide with you all, now and forever. Amen. The members of this gathering will please remain standing and join in the singing of the first stanza of America. in their seats until the governor and his party and the escorted groups have left the chamber.